Hi guys, this is Drew Brashler. I am wanting to today talk about the graphic EQs that are available inside of the Behringer X32 effects rack. Now there's two different effects. We have our GEQ and our True EQ. Uh, both of them are available in a stereo or a dual channel setup. Uh, the stereo would basically link uh, one and two uh, sides, so ch side A and side B, and link them so whatever you're applying to one is equal, uh, equally applied to the other. Whereas the dual channel, you can have two separate EQs on A and B. So with the dual channel, we would want to insert that on maybe monitors, uh, so mix bus one and mix bus two. That way you can have a uh, 31 band uh, EQ on mix bus one for one monitor and then a separate EQ for monitor two. Whereas our stereo we, we, we use for our left right um, mains. Now the GEQ is um, similar to a standard 31 band one third octave graphic equalizer. Uh, so this is just your normal run of the mill one that you can pick up at the music store to insert into a rack. Uh, the true EQ is similar um, to the uh, GEQ, but this one uses a different algorithm to calculate the boost and cuts. So when you are boosting and cutting, uh, the look that you have on the sliders is actually going to look very similar to what's being applied uh, to the audio. Now, for both of these tests, uh, I was generating pink noise through uh, the Behringer X32 internally, and then that was being sent to the left-right bus. Uh, then the left-right bus was routed to matrix 1 and 2. Uh, EQ was then applied to matrix 1. Uh, matrix 2 was left alone. Uh, then matrix 1 and 2 were then sent out of the console via aux 1 and 2, and then inputted into my Focusrite Scarlet 2i2 uh, for smart for analysis. A delay was applied to matrix 2 to allow both matrix 1 and 2 to come in uh, time aligned. And then a one second average was applied uh, for a clean line on the graphs. Now this is what I was actually doing to the um, doing with the EQ, I was boosting 5 dB on 500 and 2K, and then on the sliders of 630, 800, 1K, 1.25K, and 1.6K, I was then boosting by 10 dB. So we have 5, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, and then 5, and then this is back down at 0 on the rest of them. Now on this screen, we can actually see what's being applied to the channel uh, with that specific EQ. Now, as you can see, uh, we have our frequency down here, and so 1K is right here in the middle, and then our amplitude is on the left-hand side, so our 10 dB line is right here. Now, you're probably questioning yourself, why is this uh, graph so much higher than 10 dB when we are applying it? Each of the uh, sliders have a Q or a bandwidth and affect the frequencies around uh, that boost or cut. And so we can see that on this next slide. And so this is a, a kind of a zoomed in version, um, but you can see at 10 dB is right here. Now this is um, section per octave. So if we go right here to the third octave, we can see that at one third octave down from the main frequency that we were boosting, it's still boosted by 3 dB. And then at, down here at uh, two third octaves down, we can see that it's still boosted a little bit. Now when we go back to this, we can see that each of these sliders is affecting the frequencies around it. So when we boost five of those uh, sliders up, you're actually creating this little kind of crown looking thing um, by having the frequencies around uh, affect the frequencies around that. And so all of these are being boosted up. And so the 1K is actually sitting up here at 17, uh, 16, 17 dB. Uh, when on the graphic EQ, it's only boosted to 10. So let's go ahead and look over at the true EQ. Now I was doing the same thing, uh, 5, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, and 5 on the graphic EQ. We can see that 1K is right here in the middle. And when we go look at this through Smart, we can see that it is boosting everything by 10. And then we can see that right here at 500, it's at 5. Um, now what it's doing is it's using a different algorithm for calculating how you're boosting and cutting. Uh, so this looks very similar to how you had it on the, on the sliders, as we can see. Now we can also look at um, a single boost here. 
So this is just taking the 1K slider up by 10 dB. Uh, we can notice that it does affect around it a lot more than the other, uh, the GEQ. Now here is a comparison of both the uh, graph, the GEQ and the True EQ. Uh, the GEQ is in the red, and the uh, True EQ is in pink. And we can also see up here on the phase um, is being affected differently. We can see it's a lot more clean with the True EQ rather than the GEQ, where it's kind of more bumpy. And then also here is uh, the comparison of the uh, True EQ, which is in blue, and the GEQ, which is in green. We can see the difference between these two um, in a single boost of 10 dB on 1K. So, um, you know, when, when you're applying this type of thing, it, it's interesting that the old school uh, graphic EQs, you'd think by boosting, you know, at making like a little shelf would keep everything even, but actually, in reality, it does not. It makes those little boost and cuts uh, going along that, uh, as you saw in this today. Um, so it, it just is uh, kind of interesting when you when you research really far into it and actually look at what it's doing to the signal. Um, so you can use both of them uh, equally as well. Uh, so in some cases, you want to use the true EQ. In some cases, you want to use the graphic EQ. Uh, whenever doing uh, stuff onto a system, I always recommend uh, using a program like Smart or uh, True RTA, um, any of those programs, to actually have a visual representation of what's going on in the system and also trust your ear. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to post below. Uh, but thank you for watching this video.